Um, yeah, so we talk about four ingredients which we took, typically look at for investing in a company. I think some of you guys have been in the previous classes, so maybe some of it I'll kind of be uh, repeating. But I wanted to try to give some, give some examples of what you see or you probably know of some companies and pretty and you probably think that they're similar companies uh, in the same domain and probably doing the same, uh, the same thing, but the strategies are different. So the four ingredients that I typically look at when I'm investing in a company is one is the people, second one is the market, the third one is the competition, and uh, the fourth one is what is the differentiation. And maybe I'd rather I like to make it uh, sort of a dialogue as compared to a monologue. So if you guys want to sort of pitch in about what you're creating and why do you think it's different or why do you think your team will succeed based on people or which other p companies you see doing something similar to yours, it'll kind of be helpful to correlate between what I'm talk talking about. So just briefly, uh, we are all working on their ideas. Right, that's. And we have made some progress, and actually the final uh, assessment going to be on their presentation. So we right. actually are going to be doing it. So that will be great. Right. So how many teams over here, or is it all nine individual? Teams, nine, teams. nine teams. So over here, just show of hands, individual teams. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. How about you? Nobody behind you, right? No, no, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, I thought somebody was behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you also start something? So five teams over here, right? Uh, quickly, what are you working on? Sir, I, we are making a product to detect online piracy. Okay, so I'm just going to write it over here. It's not going to show up, but just give me a second. So online piracy. How about you? I just can be stopped. Okay, same stuff, okay. Okay. So we are building uh, like automated speech recognition uh, system for uh, you know customer uh, care for banks. Okay, fine. 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 So iris locking system and speech recognition are the use cases separate separate because you can also use iris for opening the vault, right? I think one of you had mentioned earlier about yeah, right. So speech recognition is a different thing. But what is the use case for that? For uh, like uh, call centers uh, that the banks have, we want to eliminate those so that people can uh, the customers can automatically ask queries to the system and uh, on phone without internet. Okay, fine, fine. So it's kind of like a bot, but uh, speech speech bot. Fair enough. Uh, dermatology, telemedicine platform, Medilo. Fair enough. Okay. Why? Why is it telemedicine? Why just not a, to, a dermatology platform? What, what, what's why? Why are you introducing telemedicine in this? Because it connects patient and doctor at close, far distance. Okay, so your so your focus area is who? Is it second tier cities, third tier cities? Is it rural? Urban rich. <laughs> Okay, now so this is specific reason why I'm going to ask this before I start my slides. So let me. Okay, well, how about how about you? Fine. Yeah, it's like it's just, uh, familiar faces. <laughs> okay, how about? Okay, again. Okay, so what I'm going to basically do is going to use three axes. I'll break it up into I'm just going to put people over here. I'm going to put a market over here. I'm going to put uh, competition over here and difference. So I'm going to differentiation. I'll just put as IP. Okay. So, each of you, can you give me like one quick sentence on each of these? So, why do you think your team is the best? Why do you think the market is really big? Why do you think, do you know the, who, the, who the competition can be or is? And uh, what is the differentiation that you're creating compared to somebody else? Okay. Uh, 
are good because uh, we are smart people in a good uh, in a place where we can use our skills. I think that's an issue. Okay, so I'm gonna okay. So I'm gonna give you real time feedback. Okay, so I'm, I'm based on your answers. I'm just gonna put a question mark. Okay, then what about market? The market is taking off uh, right now uh, in India. Uh, there are a few companies from abroad who are setting up shop here, uh, but most of the market is held by one company called AI Flex, which is not uh, which is dealing with the online market. That basically covers both the market and the company. AI Flex. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about IP? Uh, our algorithm is going to be able to detect the online piracy, uh, online videos or movies automatically. So uh, the current algorithms can uh, go ahead and detect uh, fifty percent of the links. Uh, uh, so, so let me do one thing. Let me so let me break it up. I'm going to break up IP in terms of technology, in terms of a separate. So I'm trying to understand based on your answers. How are you breaking up your IP? Is it technology driven? Is it distribution? Is it multiple other things which I can bring up later on? But right now I'm just going to put as IP is your tech. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. I think you should put tech. Yeah, that's right. And then related to IP, if not, we can find out that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, sorry. I, I kind of. You guys are on top over here, right? Fine. Okay. I just. Uh, what about uh, you guys? from dip, uh, different departments so it is multi departments okay why do you think i put a question mark for people when he answered his question so we have a cs guy okay yeah. so getting better getting better and we also have uh, the materials guy ki what type of docs and stuff okay fine and, and the cs guy to code so you're saying CS and materials, right? Yeah, CS and materials. Okay, fine. The market is banks and all that stuff, and banks it is taking off. Uh, it is taking off because uh, digitization is taking place. Digital India is. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a question mark here. You need to be more specific. Like, Narendra Modi took this digital India campaign, so all these uh, our systems are going to be used. Oh. That's too general. Yeah, but so I'll give you a, I'll give you a counter example. Narendra Modi has gone digital. He wants all the all the banks to use POS machines in multiple retail shops. Who is going to bear the cost? Again, if you look at demortization, January numbers in terms of cash have basically come back to what November or October numbers are. So when you're telling me an answer, be very specific about why is the market this big and how is it changing and growing at so and so scale. The market is this big as uh, you know, with time people need more things and to keep them safe, they need this type of locking system. Very, very, very open, very open. So you're, you're talking about multiple verticals, banks, etc. Like uh, maybe jewelry shops. So, so I'm saying, get more specific. So I'm going to keep a question mark right now, and I'll tell you why I want you guys to get more specific. Okay? How about uh, the competition? Uh, we, we believe the companies which make the biometric locking system, uh, like Godrej, like Godrej. Okay, so what if I tell you Godrej doesn't make the biometric situation, uh, the solution they are buy from somebody else? Then is Godrej the competition or is it um, a partner? Godrej is actually a competition because they make, uh, they have uh, uh, customers all over the uh, places. They have customer database basically. Oh, so one is customer database in terms of potential clients who can buy their solution. Yeah. What if I tell you that Godrej is actually outsourced its manufacturing for that biometric to China? Then do you become a partner or do you become are you competition? Okay, so let's question that. What about IP? Technology and a design. Okay, I'll just put tech then. Fine. Okay. Speech recognition. We are a uh, team of four CS guys, and this is uh, we we are not uh, in speech recognition. We are not going to build a hardware product. We are going to provide a software backend on server so i think uh, uh, four cs guys make a strong team for that we don't uh, need probably multi passive people okay um, for markets we are targeting banks specifically okay so, and we are going to talk to some banks and they are uh, very much keen to okay uh, for competition uh, 
For competition, I am uh, not sure we have a direct competition. Banks already are pretty com some banks are pretty comfortable with the uh, with building huge call centers, but I, we we think we are, we are much cheaper and faster and efficient than the call centers. So I don't consider them as competitions. A competition would be some some people would be more preferable in using say a phone app over the internet to get all their data. So your competition is replacement as compared to something that you are doing. Yeah. So. Okay, so you should probably dig a little deeper because I can think of two competitors right now in your market. Okay. One of us is a company that we invested in. So we can talk about that, but de dig a little deeper in terms of who is also doing the same thing. Okay, yeah. or IP is it? And for our IP, it's a is the uh, algorithm that we are. So tech. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. We have this blend of healthcare practitioners and image processing engineers. Required to. So, you have image processing guys and healthcare guys. Yeah. Who is in healthcare? Uh, one doctor from ENS. Okay, who is full time in the team already? Yeah. Okay. And they guide. So, I am just going to put a doc plus what else? So, software, right? So, CS guys, I am guessing. Okay, fine. In terms of market, everyone who wants to groom himself, who search about these things, Matab, we Try to remove all lip reddening, platelet rich plasma and non-surgical facelifts. I have found out these are hot issues right now in dermatology and cosmetology section because in urban dermatology means cosmetology mostly. Okay, fine. No question mark here. What about competition? Competition, 1MG, Pecto and Librate. But they are very general. Very, no very questionable. So no very questionable. Right well, I question that but... You need to dig a little deeper. Uh, IP? IP the image processing machine learning algorithm <laughs> to better detect the disease. Okay. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions now. Okay. Uh, and both of us are major in physics. Okay. Looking to hire from the IDC people sure. to print the final product regarding the design. Yeah. Okay, fine. What about uh, the market? Market actually, we are targeting to two different ways. We are targeting selling the value and one is selling the value. Value and experience, we are targeting business executives. Okay. And value to the two, uh, two star to four star hotels. Okay. Okay, fine. So I'm gonna go. So hotels mainly, right? Yeah. Okay. Competition. Competition in India, we have three products. One is Aqua and Deco 360 and Hands Away. Aqua and is like very high end product, ranging from 30k to 35k. Like it, uh, the experience is very good, but actually not affordable. And the rest of the two uh, compromise on the experience, but they actually have a lesser part. We actually want to build both the. So who is competing in this space? Like what are the hotels currently using which they have to replace? No, no, no. Uh, uh, actually, there is only one product that is actually there that is Aquant. Eco 360 and Hans Rohi are still in the developing phase. No, no. Yeah. This is, you're talking about your product. Yes. Yeah. What I'm asking you is who else is there in this space who actually is doing the same thing as you? You don't have any competition. No, savings plus uh, experience. Okay. Let me just put question mark. What about I? Uh, what's your IP? Like the design part. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about. Okay, fine. What about you guys? Well, I need to add you guys. You right? What? Okay. Where's your team? Where team? Uh, can you sit together? It'll be easier. Or you can go back if you want. Either way. I whichever. Way. Okay, so then you come ahead. What's the what does your team do or what does your come? Any TRA, right? Yeah. Okay. So why don't you go first and I'll go to Netra? People, we have people from varied backgrounds. Uh, we have people from design, uh, mechanical, and chemical, and which can which according to us is the best. 
combination for designing uh, and marketing the product and uh, uh, market we are focusing on indian market because uh, indian kitchens are very much different from uh, the western kitchens for for and for western kitchens there are uh, dishwashers exist and uh, we have competition with large existing dishwashers okay so is your competition dishwashers or can you would somebody use you even though they have a dishwasher i know you're telling me that you're a replacement to dishwasher i'm just questioning that are you an accessory to a dishwasher no. so you're completely a replacement to dishwasher okay fine so you're okay so let's say okay do, which companies uh, would be would you think are in india no so you need to be specific based on india because lg samsung stuff are do dishwashers and they also have a global footprint so you talk about india which is the ones that are most prevalent do you have you made a list of in consumer durables all the companies in consumer durables like lg samsung godrej etc which ones have market share in india especially in dishwasher so you guys get free crystal data don't you guys get free crystal database uh, databases you guys know crystal databases you guys should start using it so i said i see i don't know a lot of crystal data the crystal reports which you so i actually don't know a lot of uh, crystal reports for consumer durables because i was doing some research for my company so you guys should definitely do that because when you're looking at a market and looking at replacing somebody do you go with somebody who's the market leader or do you go against somebody who's actually the market loser and therefore if the market loser is probably has 2% or 5% in india would they want to sort of use you as a replacement for their product because not doing well so you need to start talking to manufacturers to see whether you can collaborate with them and they can have another product line so what i'm saying is godrej might probably have 5% in dishwater dishwashers in india they might they might not be selling because either price points too high or whether the product doesn't last for too long so are they serious about carrying on dishwashers do they want to create another line and that line could be you guys So think a little differently in terms of who is your competition and who is your collaborator. So I'm just going to put that as question mark right now. So I'll just put manufacturers. So I'll just put LG, then uh, Samsung. Okay. Uh, mar- market. I still I still don't have an idea how many dishwashers get sold in India. Do you have an idea? Market size we don't have any. So you should check. Target that. market we know that. Uh, there will be uh, we know, we have the customer persona so uh, so the question again is how big is the market right if you see dishwasher sales not really happening in india probably the market is like i don't know 1 million dishwashers in india is that a big enough market or not does that make sense to enter that market would you do you actually displace displace the buy so are you a comp- competition to the made or are you competition to the dishwasher Like just questions that you should probably check with us. With do some research on that. Uh, what's the IP? I love it. <laughs> as soon as I enter IT, tech, 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 everything is tech. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about you? Uh, we have background in computer science. What do you guys do first? Uh, machine learning. For what? Uh, so our product is an image-based translation system. Okay, fine. So, who's in your team? Yes. Okay. Market. Uh, so, what are you going to be translating? Uh, any kind of text as an image. So, is your so it's text to speech or it's text to text? So it's text to text. I know you're saying image to image, but basically it's multilingual conversion, multilingual conversion or translation yeah. in text itself. Yeah. So you're not changing the medium from text to voice. Once you have text, you can go to voice. I agree, but I'm just saying you're not doing that. Uh, we are doing that. So are you going to focus on text to text or text to speech? Uh, text translation speech. So speech is the final output. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of market. You mentioned travel. Yeah. What else are you looking? Business. business? Tourists, tourists, and traveling businesses. Okay, fine. 
any research on how big this market is like you can give me general numbers saying that so many tourists come to india from so many different countries they'll be looking at the you know, lonely like a lonely planet guide and therefore they'll basically be their own conversion uh, conversions from france french to indian or uh, to hindi or whatever but when you're looking at tourists is it so what's the use case because you already have enough books that are in multiple languages so i'm trying to, i'm trying to, i'm trying to understand so what the uh, when you go in value the is market, most of the billboard signs are in the local language you okay so that's the major use case so what is it is going to be an app to take a photograph it converts into your language yeah. and then voice so you can basically read signs through voice yeah. okay okay fine and ip i guess again is tech right okay yeah, fair enough um and who do you think your competition would be uh, the competition is google translation but uh the what we are adding they are not as we are supporting why wouldn't you think e-commerce is a potential market so when i go to say flipkart and say i am say i only know canada how do i buy you can just transfer the mobile but can i do a checkout also so if i'm going through the multiple features in the in the site for that product i don't think you're, you they'll give me a exact translation in canada for the website right uh, so the problem here is once you have some kind of text which the machine recognizes you have translation models which can easily convert into canada or so what i'm saying is right now nobody's doing it or are people doing it so if i go to flipkart can i get a canada version of flipkart to check out so i'm asking why isn't that a potential market just questioning start feel because our major input is an image there is a image processing algorithm in that case no requirement okay we need an html parts of the web page sure so it's mainly image focused yeah so in that case you just require, require a translation model where you require image processing plus translation okay so let me just so just remember the answers so for people you mainly mentioned tech as a main at least one co-founder and depending on whether it's a product or whether it's a tech product you basically said the material science or you talked about uh, a design engineer so basically you talked about tech and product fair enough and any debates about that I'm just trying. I'm just trying to generalize how you, how you basically uh, looked at people. So people, according to you, was obviously tech, 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 and tech plus um, tech slash physical product uh, capabilities, right? Any any anomalies over here that I'm missing? Okay. In IP, you guys all mentioned tech. Okay. Any anomalies here? Anybody disagrees? You can't change your answers then, right? Once you finish. For market, there is design also because the products are there. So, so what I'm putting is product. So I'll, okay, let me put design too. Okay, in people or in uh, IP. Okay, in IP, IP fine. IP. Okay, okay, okay. In wow, oh, this just keeps. Okay, market is uh, lot of questions over here. I would just sort of summarize by saying very broad. Uh, some of you have basically talked about banks or hotels but most of it has been very broad saying that travel is a space banking is a space um, i guess iris lock in so it's very very broad in terms of very specific so if somebody told me i'm looking at a bank which may, maybe has about 100 employees or 200 sorry 1000 employees which is probably has a market share of 20% in india and i'm mark, i'm targeting them because so and so reasons it'll be very very focused right now all of you have been very broad in terms so first of all you've been very broad and second some of you have said okay some one one or two particular verticals like you said talked about hotels luxury and say mid now in luxury and mid you basically look you the way you're breaking it up is the price point of the product now in a in a hotel you have 20, 10 beds 20 beds 30 beds you can have luxury boutique you can have luxury like a taj in mid segment you can have like a taj uh, uh, i forget the name of the mid segment taj uh, hotel 
which is the ba- which is the basic uh, Taj Hotel. Uh, you guys need to go out, man. <laughs> I'm giving you answers. No, no. See again, that's what I mean. That's premium. Tell me the mid level, which basically is out of ra- outside railway stations. It's it's owned by the Taj Group. Starbucks. <laughs> okay, before you answer, wait your wait your answer. So. Do you, like, give me some names and tell me, okay, is it 20 room, 30 room, 40 room? What should the budget be? How many beds should they have? So also look at a lot of, like when you have crystal, look at some banks, look at how the banks, so look at the hotels and look how the hotels are, how do they analyze hotels? Because when you're talking to a hotel and trying to make a pitch, they'll be talking some language, you'll be talking some another, la- another language. So you need to understand that what are their requirements from a cost perspective. So one, look at two factors. One is the revenue perspective, one is the cost perspective. I do increase revenue by bookings, a reduced cost and your yours is more redu- reduction in cost because you're saving water now what is that bill amount what does it quantify to any significant amount so look at the revenues that a hotel makes look at the net profits that the hotel makes and then look at the key item of okay how much does amenities like water etc contribute as a cost factor to the profit or to the revenue and then figure out whether that is sizable or not that's probably how you look at what target hotels you'll be looking at as compared to premium and uh, and sub uh, sub, okay. Then so I'm just put, putting market as broad and let's see. Um, okay, I just put broad right now. And the fourth point is uh, market basically you are asking numbers. I'm not asking numbers. So one is numbers fair enough in terms of how big the market can be. But what I'm finding difficult to digest is you can tell me banking or like segment. So, so bank is my segment. Huh. You have probably 20 big banks in India. Huh. Probably four big, like four top banks, private banks. Now, are those guys going to be a segment or not in terms of the top four banks? So you told me, okay, in a bank, a bank probably which has about uh, a, a, like a, a loan portfolio of say 2000. So how, do you know how much, uh, what the loan portfolio for HDFC is, for example? So you should have these numbers. So I'll give you a number. It's about... Uh, I think it's two lakh forty five thousand crores. So now, is that the right bank that you're going to go after? Is it a small bank like an RBL, which is much smaller? Is it an NBFC, which is probably a three hundred crore loan book? Is it a hundred? So you need to figure out. Okay, if my focus is a vault, because that's a starting point. How, which banks have vaults? Which NBFCs have vault? Are there non banks that also have vaults? Like NBFCs have gold loans. Where do they where do they store the gold? They'll have vaults to store the gold. So banking expands to NBFCs and banking. Now in that, which one should be my first focus area? So when I'm, okay, so I'll give you another example. If I'm targeting MSMEs or or medium sized uh, uh, enterprises. Now MSMEs in India is a huge variety. So you need to focus focus on, okay, am I looking at the Chromas of the world? Am I looking at the Kirana stock? Is it a Kirana store? So is the revenue three lakhs per month? Is it like one crore a month? What is it? So how is that uh, different from so when you're telling me I'm targeting banks, huh. you're not drilled down to say, okay, this is these are the banks which actually require me because so and so criteria. So you're not done research in terms of why would they need you. So like I'll give an example of hotels, are you increasing the revenue, reducing the cost? You'll have other factors also over there in terms of security being it can be a differentiator for other banks. It will help in pitching them. It will help it'll help in you identifying who you should be pitching to and why you should be pitching to. And that goes back to people, which I'll come to. Okay. So, ma- so market, any other questions on market? So when somebody says I'm looking at, I'm going to do a food app and the market is $1 billion. How do you justify that? Are you looking at discovery, which is the Are you looking at delivery, which is probably B2B, which is something like a runner. Are you looking at this uh, ordering plus delivery, which is Swiggy. And therefore, if you, depending on who you're looking at, because Zomato makes a lot of money on revenue, on advertising, uh, not on bookings. Swiggy makes a lot of money on bookings because they do delivery. Everybody knows Zomato did uh, Swiggy over here. Okay. So the market size for each one will be different. It won't be the same, even though it looks like both of them are attacking the food industry. So think a little more, sort of dissect the problem a little more. Don't generalize it. And the more you can dissect it, the more you'll understand where your IP can be, what kind of people you'll probably need. So look at any, so I would suggest based on your product, you can filter down to all the other four criteria and say, okay, how should the, what kind of people should I need? What kind of 
competition who's my competition who's my sort of who can i work with like go this for for example are you can you work with go this or go this or is it going to be a competition for you so think about these uh, these some things of these problems ip okay so i finished ip i finished people market and um, competition i think competition i'm not got a very specific answer of who the competition and why it's competition it's again a very generic answer Okay. Okay. So again, as I mentioned, the main primary different uh, ingredients are the people, differentiator, and uh, the market, and competition. I'll get to. So one is okay. So I just, I think most of you, some of you guys have already seen these slides or no? Because I don't remember who was there in which classes. Been kind of because I taught out last year also. But anyway, I'll just. give you some time to read so you need to realize that when you're creating a team identify who you need but make sure that based on your culture so culture is very very important when you start a company so make sure that the few founding members sort of identify with the same culture and believe in the same thing otherwise you'll kind of have problems in divorces which basically means that some of the founding members will leave after 1 2 years We had cases. So we've invested in about hundred companies so far. We've already had about seven companies where the founder, one of the founders, left because of multiple disputes. Whether it's not getting enough stake, whether he was not actually pulling his own weight, whether he was actually a wrong, uh, wrong sort of uh, skill set for the kind of business you're doing. So generally, because you're in college, you'll probably sort of have your own network of your dorm mates or maybe your friends. and maybe those are, those guys might, might, might not be the right co-founders so think of actually when you're building a team think of the right people because it's going to be a 4 to 5 or to 6 year journey at a minimum like just to give you an example you all know of housing.com right you know all know so let's see housing.com how many co-founders do they have 12 fine how how much did they raise how much money did they raise i i know every talk reads pr so you probably know how much money they've raised so far Take an approximate guess. Oh yeah, hundred million. What do you think the valuation approximately is? Was not is sorry was half a billion. Half a bill? Give me millions because you said hundred millions. I'm just trying to convert it into. Okay, don't throw random numbers. Think a little deeply. Why? So when I when you say one billion or five hundred million, it's a big difference. Five hundred million. Five hundred million. Okay. So let's assume it's three hundred million, just for uh, because typically you'll see, okay. So we'll we'll talk about valuations later, but let's assume it's three hundred million. Any idea how long the company, like how much time it took from the company to start the company to finally reach the three hundred million dollar uh, valuation? And I'm using housing because it's IIT Bombay kids. We are. I think it was about four years. So four years from scratch, from your from like you guys basically started a company in his dorm. Uh, not he, I think he was a dropout. Rahul raised hundred million in total. Valuation three hundred million in four years. Now let's ask you another example. You know you know Just Dial. Okay, when did Just Dial start? Ninety five, ninety five. Okay, so how many years has it been since existence? Okay, probably fifteen years. What's the valuation right now of the company? They went public, you know, about two years. I think a year, two years back. So say that's two years back. So ten years existence. Two thousand fourteen, fifteen is when they went public. What do you think the valuation was? Ten years. You all have already just dialed compared to housing. Housing was four years, zero to three hundred million. Just that was ten years. Struggled, went public, raised probably about forty million is my guess. I don't know the right number, but I'm guessing forty million. Wild guess. Hundred million. So there's obviously there's a reason why Just Dial survived. Why Just Dial was valued hundred million compared to a crazy valuation. Why they pivoted multiple times. So you should read about Just Dial because I think 
we look at too many western and chinese counterparts to decide okay how should india work i think there are few but there are few, there are some companies that have kind of survived for 10 12 years are 100 million 200 million you need to figure out why they survived what they did and how many times they pivoted to actually see where they are right now who are the people behind the company did the people leave during the journey did they stay over there so think around those lines so just to give you an example the cto of just dial after they went public left the company to join a start to do a startup why did he leave I, so he spent about 4 years in uh, just dial he probably had 2% of the 2% uh, ownership why would he leave so all these all these points won't be in a book won't be in a ready reckoner you have to kind of google understand kya hua what is how did the life of the company what is the life of the company because india is a different playing field so we talk about people and all of you guys said tech well, for my learning if you don't have a business guy you know your company is not going to work who is going to sell your product you can build the most sexy product nobody going to buy it look at housing they built the most sex i think they built a really cool product what happened to them look at tiny owl they built a great product what happened to them i have nothing against the founder and nothing against the uh, the company but if you look at the company profile of the founders did you think they had any business guy on on the team did they have anybody who actually had a had a understanding of how how restaurants work what are the requirements how what are the real estate guys require what are the brokers require so think a little more about what kind of team you want because i'm not sure so i think there are about seven teams over here there are probably more startups in iit I don't know how many of them will, how many of you will actually create a startup after graduation if you guys are serious you should definitely read up about why have companies failed in india don't look at us gyan because us works differently you can sell a tech product without having a business guy so think about what are the pro- what are the problems that the current incumbents in the in- industry are facing like in banks in hotels what are the problems they are facing like i know you are really excited about doing this tech and think okay this these guys will like it because of so and so reasons but have you ever asked a bank you know what what are your problems don't go with your technology and say okay can we use this how much will you pay for it first figure out what are the problems they face and then figure out what is the budget or is is your is your solution a priority for them in the top 3 or not if it's not then you're just wasting your time so one of you like all none of you have said business guy so when you talk about people it also goes into ip like i can say my ip also is great people but what does great people mean for each industry is going to be different So think around create like getting a good team because that's going to make all the difference. That you're going to it's going to be six to seven year old life of a company at the minimum. If these guys don't stick together, you're going to have downfalls. You're going to have problems in 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 a, in a startup. So you guys need to stick together in terms of co-founding team and have the right skill sets. Don't go with friends only just because they're friends. This is some data on our investments. So we made about 70 investments from the first fund. We tried to collect some data about what the teams, how the team uh, break up. So this was in 2011 when we started the first fund, which was a 20 million dollar fund. Our new fund is 60 million, which we launched in December of uh, 15. And from 17 percent co sole founders, so 70 percent. So let's take a number of 100 companies. 17 companies that sold co founders. Now in our new fund, we only probably have maybe one company at the max out of 40 that actually has a sole co-founder why did we do that we just realized that companies are becoming more more and more complex business are becoming more and more complex and you need more people to actually support the burden so it's very rare that i would make an investment in a single co-founder so you need to figure out okay in my team what are the skill sets that i need so instead of say looking at who your friends are who your colleagues are sit down and figure out you know what based on the industry that i'm going to be focusing on based on my product what kind of selling requirements would i need what kind of tech requirements would i need what kind of product guys would i need what kind of operational guys would i need so just to give you an idea dishwashers in dishwashers you probably need a really good sales guy you probably need a really good operational guy for support you probably need a good tech guy for actually building the system so think around whether you have those kind of expertise where can you get them can you get them from the industry can you get good mentors from industry who can help you who can potentially become co-founders or connect you with some of their employees who might want to do a startup So do a lot of research on the right team because you spend a lot of time building a great product. You spend a lot of time understanding the market. You waste two years of your life and say, okay, I failed because I didn't have the right team, which is a pity. Because for me, money is not a pro- money is not a waste. Time is a waste. You have one life. You might as well 
make the most of it. So don't waste your time. Look at the look at it. Forty five percent co founders are batchmates, juniors, seniors. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The good thing is basically I know the guy for probably five years, ten years, so I can rely on him. I can trust him. I can share my my worst moments and my best moments, and he won't leave or I won't leave. The challenge. So, so there have been cases in our companies where I have actually given personal small personal loans to the founders because they needed money at some point. And it was a very difficult situation that I had because I was an investor. I was giving some money to them because they needed some personal requirements. And I'm also running a, I'm also sort of managing the company uh, with them when I go for board meets. So there's some, there's some. You should have like a gap in terms of what you can share, what you can't share, and you know that you should know what they can take and what they can't take in terms of your emotion. So one of you should basically be able to take a lot of emotional crap from everybody else. One of you should be very logical. So when you have a discussion. You go once you leave the room after the discussion. You come up with a conclusion. It shouldn't be basically ego coming in the battle. So keep your personal sort of friendship aside when you're running a company because you'll have a lot of hard decisions to make, and ego cannot play a role in that. So again, I would suggest like look at some I, I guess successful companies that you've seen in India, and see what who the research about the co-founders. How long did they know know each other for? What were they doing earlier? It kind of give you an idea of what kind of people you should also have on your team. Eleven percent. So again, look look at the things. Twenty percent are ex-colleague roommates. Eleven percent are childhood friends. Forty-five percent co-founders are batchmates. Four percent are spouses. So I, I have nothing against this, but from our experience, I think except for one company out of I think four companies, we had a bad we had a bad uh, time when. Uh, it's a couple actually running a company. I'm sure there are exceptions, but somehow it just didn't work for us. Uh, I think the personal life and professional life have been it's been difficult to kind of navigate. I think uh, all of you out of shop clues, shop clues, it's a couple, and they had some challenges. Which, again, you need to you guys need to read up about what kind of team that you really require, because that's what's going to keep you together. Any questions? Again, personal details. No bias against women, but we just seen that unfortunately, ninety percent of the companies are male founders. Uh, don't ask me why, but that's what we've seen. Uh, even though, if you look at Shop Clues, Radhika is a great founder. She's a woman. Zip Dial, which we had invested in, Valerie was a co-founder. She's a lady. Uh, we have thankfully we have few investments in our current uh, portfolio. In our current uh, portfolio, that actually have women founders. So no bias, but I guess you guys need to step up. Yeah, you need more co-founders who are women. Interesting again. So we try to find out whether it was difficult or post-marriage, pre-marriage, and uh, haven't done any analysis to see whether the company has tanked because its spouse is working together. Marriages are they married, non-married? I'll try to get some data, uh, data, but just wanted to throw out whatever numbers I could. Again, we've uh, so if you look at uh, I think. Kuna, you heard of Capital Float? It's a lending company. Uh, look it up. So again, you guys need to be a little more aware of what's happening in the ecosystem. And I would suggest also look at core companies. So if you're looking at banking, look at some research reports in banking and figure out kya ho raha hai banking mein. If you're looking at say dishwashers, consumer uh, consumer durables, figure out what's happening over there. Who are the market shares? Why are they bleeding? Look, if you're looking at space, they say speech recognition. Uh, so have you heard of Exotel? Have you heard of? Um, Uh, these guys. Ozone tell have you heard of Nolarity? You guys need to be all aware of what's happening. Go to the campus. There's a world out there. Out there. Uh, look, if you look at Durban Technology Telemedicine, you guys need to understand Apollo tried telemedicine. Why did they do telemedicine? The reason they did telemedicine is because they wanted people to actually come from the villages and come to the hospitals so they can make more money, not because social reason. Okay, I don't know whether I should be recording this, but sure. <laughs> but all I'm saying is you need to understand why telemedicine was born. Who is like which telemedicine models are really working, which are not really working, and does your dermatology company does it make sense on demand, which basically means no physical infrastructure? Do you want to have physical infrastructure? So look at look at some companies like say my dentist, which basically has created a dentist chain around India. Look at companies like say uh, my family doctor, which again is my modern doctor, I think, which basically looks at uh, general physicians. Uh, look at Portia. All these are new age. Now look at the old ones. Look at Apollo. Look at like Apollo has done a splendid job in terms of having specialty or specialty hospitals. 
look at Enrich. Enrich also to some level can be a competitor because it does because uh, it's it's in that same similar space. So look at what's happening. Like Crystal will give you all this information. So do some research. If you're looking at say Netra, uh, tough one. So I'll, what I can do is I can connect you to this company called Audio Compass, which is one of our portfolio companies. What they're trying to do is, uh, if you look at all these tourist spots like Ajanta El Elora, if you look at say Gateway of India, you want to try to get an idea of what is the history of that place. So they create these audio tours, which are multilingual. And they actually have to some, like I think their IP, again, we're talking about IP, their IP is not, I would say technology, but mainly around how do you create these audio clips in the least amount of time and the least amount of money. Whether it's an outsourced model, whether it's an in-house model, think of processes also as IP as compared to, so when you say tech, you're mainly saying tech product, but think of processes also as IP that you can create, which can be a differentiator. Fair enough. Any, any questions so far? So, uh, all of you have heard of Snapdeal, right? So, Snapdeal, at least from what I understand or what I know, I think Kunal and uh, Kunal actually, I think, has a family business. So, when I was saying family businesses, does your, fa does your father or grandfather actually have a family business you're coming from, or are you actually a salaried or working class? So, so it's not, so there's no reason. So what we did is we invest in all these companies and after four or five years of investment, we said, okay, let's pick up some data and see what is it saying. I've not made any correlations between, okay, this company did really well because this founder was a woman plus from a service in for service uh, background. I've not made any conclusion. I'm just giving you, I'm just throwing some data points uh, to just absorb. So I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but from whatever, what do I understand? I think coming from a business background is very helpful in terms of having a family business because you already understand the tricks and you understand trade in India. India is a difficult country to crack. Don't get like it's it's difficult. Like you talk about startups, you talk about all like if you know what's been happening from the last three four months. Snap deals fired multiple people. Craft villas fired multiple people. Like everybody's firing a lot. Why are they firing? Because they need to figure out whether the model still works or not. And they raised hundred one billion two billion dollars so far. So you don't know whether the model works post one billion. There's a question mark over there. So if you talk about business families, they want to make money on every trade. So they know at least they at least they understand the business. Now the challenge, and this is I take a class also in family business. And the challenge always has been transition from your grandfather and father to a new new way of disrupting the business. So if you understand the old ways, understand the gaps, understand how to make money, and then use technology to actually make as an enabler, I think it's a, it's an interesting background. I'm biased, but that's my view. Yeah. I think... Well, what you need to realize is that you, as the journey is going to be long, journey is going to be difficult. How do you keep motivating people? So once you say, say you got a co-founding team of three or four people, how do you get the next level of people? Like you'll have, so what, what typically will happen is when you raise funds, if you guys ever raise funds, you'll have your co-founding team, which is probably two, three, four people. Then you'll probably hire junior people who are interns, who are cheap labor because for six months, eight months, you can't afford too much money. So you'll get like the really low, like you, you get your senior team, uh, co-founding team and you'll get basically a lower sort of lower team, which are coders, which are tech guys, which are probably uh, junior sales guys. Now when you raise money, whether it's like a million, two million or whatever, you need to get that mid level, which is the most difficult. And after that, you need to get more people at your level. How do you motivate people? How do you convince them to join your company? So think of one guy, think of somebody who's say works in a bank. You're looking at selling to a bank. You say, okay, I need a good sales guy who can sell to banks. Somebody from a bank. What I realize in banks is, even though they're supposed to be risky, like if you look at credit guys, they basically take they give loans, which are risky. They themselves are very risk averse. So how do you convince a guy who works in a bank to come onto your team, where you probably make half the salary and make the rest of the salary in stocks, which it doesn't know how to value. How do you, how do you sell a story to them? You need to be convinced about what you're doing to sell a story. And that, that middle level is where I've always seen a challenge in most companies, even ours. How do you hire senior to mid level to senior people when you scale up the business? Because when you scale up, when you're doing 200, like 20, 30, 40 crores of uh, revenue, if you don't have those mid medium people, you'll be running around for everything. And then you can't build a business. So again, you might more, you might pivot from what you're doing, but these general principles are really important for you guys to realize. So again, do some research, talk, go out, 
understand what's happening don't go to startup space don't go to snapdeal don't go to flipkart talk to companies that have actually been have has been successful like just dial even though people think it's a call center there's a lot of ai a lot of interesting tech on the back end which nobody has seen because the cto is an investor in our funds so he used to tell me like what how they used to model the databases what kind of tech they used to do on the back end so when you call when you call for the first time they take your information for the when you call for the next time they exactly know what you had bought earlier what they can upsell what they can cross sell and who they should be sending the leads to and how much money they can make from different merchants who tied up with them so just for example suppose you want a plumber you call up you want a plumber you get the information you get probably three plumber information next time you call up they say okay how was your plumbing experience do you want something else related to plumbing or do you want something so they have a history of your of your past they also are trying to they were trying to create ai in terms of answering questions automatically as compared to having a person over there so all these companies that you think are probably call centers or maybe not non innovative all the innovation i feel in tech is at the back end so it's tech enabled businesses that make sense as compared to tech itself they are outliers like google what is google google basically is a tech platform that makes money from revenue or from advertising so that works in us in india if you look at say so you should check like when you when you think of business models also and i didn't get into that right now in terms of how you make money when you talking about models that make sense in terms of making money check out in youtube what is the value that somebody will pay for ads is dismal so when you actually so suppose you're doing a so suppose you're doing a content company your main primary monetization can probably be uh, advertisements in advertisements you need to figure out okay how much will some brand pay me for advertising on my content platform you need to realize that, that it's it's almost impossible so we have a company where they probably get a million views a day and they probably making about 25 lakhs on the maximum or oh, less than that about i think 10 to 12 lakhs on the maximum in revenue from ads so there's no way you can it's very difficult to make a model just on ads while in us it makes sense people will pay for that so you can make a, an entire model only on ads and you'll make enough money so just understand what the main metrics how do you make money how do companies make money in in india it's a difficult market 25 lakhs per month or per year per month yeah it's not that bad <laughs> i hope i check the numbers and get back <laughs> um so again recruitment motivation managing maybe it's too early for you guys but I'll give you some time to get it. Hopefully, you get it. So women are really good in this, and I'm married, so I can tell you that they'll always. Men are generally black and white. Women, there's a lot of gray area, so they know how to keep people happy when they need to. So over here, basically, basically, she's like she's saying, "Look, you know, you're none of those, but I still love you," which can either mean that you are all of them, or I love you irrespective of you that because you're none of them. So all I'm saying is, when you have a team, you're managing a team. HR typically is a very uh, it's more it's more side uh, uh, side position where nobody really focuses on it. But when you are a decent size of say thirty forty people, have a good HR person who can actually manage the people manage your team. Because motivation, keeping them continuously interested in what you're doing, keeping them transparent. So there have been companies in our portfolio where because of different situations we had to fire some people, and because of different situations we had to pivot the model. The co-founding team didn't. communicate that really well to the rest of the team because of which the team was demotivated so team the team loved what the company was doing loved the co-founders but because of communication gap they said what are we doing i'm leaving so you need to make sure that there's transparency from the top to the bottom and you need to tell them okay why should you still be in so you need to keep motivating them because that's what your asset is if you talk about ip output people as my ip frankly speaking I think, I think so this is a good segue into why do something um, because you're like i respect entrepreneurs like don't get me wrong i respect entrepreneurs incredibly because they think they wired differently they think differently they think they can disrupt i don't have the guts to do that other than be an entrepreneur so i so they can be very obstinate about why this will work but the fact is they've taken a plunge they're doing something which is not traditional i really sort of uh, respect them so if they do well they don't do well it's, it's great that somebody can be an entrepreneur with guts to do it but don't waste your time try so you'll have so many problems when you're an entrepreneur try ensuring the number of problems that you have keep reducing as you scale up and team is number one uh, is the first one so okay, let me so what i started 
Wait, let me. Okay, so these are some of the. This is some background of the teams yeah, of companies that we've invested. So these are three, six, six companies that we invested in. These are the profile of the team members. What I want you guys to guess is what kind of company would they be setting up? So let's talk about the first one. So one guy was uh, working in Flipkart. He was part of the seller team. The other guy, uh, co-founder, was on the tech team of eBay slash PayPal. What kind of company do you think they'd set up? So let's, we should have a whiteboard here. Um, so let's. Okay, uh, pick up hand. What, what do you? Okay, fintech. Okay, why fintech? Okay, fine. What about you? Okay, so you got two fintechs, but again, why because PayPal or? Okay, fine. So you got two fintechs. Any? What about you guys? Oh no, you're not getting marked on this. <laughs> you can just take wild guesses. I'm not going to critique you, critique you guys on this. Okay, what about you guys? What do you think? Evolve. Evolve. So fintech again? Yeah. Okay, what about you guys? You should have secret ballot. It seems like once somebody says something, everybody should repeat the same thing. Okay, ecom. Okay, what about you? E okay, what about you guys? Okay, so I got e-commerce, I got fintech. Anybody else? Fintech, I get an answer because uh, you're saying it's X eBay. Okay, um, e-commerce because X Flipkart. Okay, fine. So they actually start a rental company. They're doing rental. So what they basically are trying to do is create a platform for getting offline, uh, offline uh, uh, merchants who want to rent, say, refrigerators or rent microwaves or ref rent or mic uh, uh, the scooters or rent cars to consumers who wanted that for small periods of time, rent cameras. So basically, started the rental. Now they pivoted, but now they're in fintech space. But just to give you an idea, it now started off with fintech. So they, so another example. It's not over here. It's not one of our companies. There's this guy who was a who was an army general. What kind of company do you think he'll start? So let's assume there's always a tech guy, because generally I always invest where there's a tech guy. There's no tech guys not worth investing in. Now I'm talking about business guys who actually are part of the co-founding team. Here, very young team, 24 year old. The F guy, FK guy was 24. The eBay guy was about 26. No business because both were working on tech slash the seller team, which is the backend team. So no business sense to some level. So now let's say, okay, I'm talking about a company that actually had a army general. What kind of company do you think you would have started? Wild guesses. Just think as wild as possible. And then try linking the dots. Uh, I'll take three, three answers. Come on, quick, quickly. Investigation. Something like bootcamp. Okay, think tech, tech. I'm giving you a hint. So she's saying investigation. What are you saying? Night vision. Okay, what about you guys? Okay, what is the what is the army guy? What is the forte of an army guy? No, as a as a person, as a, if I'm an army guy, discipline. what is discipline? Right, processes. You know what company started? It's called Licious. So check it out. Okay, so there's a company called Licious. There's a company called Jumbo Cart. Jumbo Cart basically is providing a platform for merchants to actually get their uh, groceries at a at a transparent time, uh, as a transparent price uh, and non-variable price. So typically, if you look at Mondays, the price keeps varying, right? Restaurants basically buy food or buy vegetables on the Monday. What this company, I believe, is doing is trying to create a platform so that the restaurants get the particular produce at a particular at a particular time at a particular price, which doesn't fluctuate. So again, very process oriented, very disciplined. So think of attributes of people that you want on your team, and then you might find them from different walks of life. Don't be fixated over banks. Don't be fixated over something else. You might just find them. So figure out what skill sets you need. That's more important. Second one. So the five co-founders here. One is from Flipkart. One is from Ola. 
one is from so two are from Flipkart, one is from Ola, one is from eBay, one is from Amazon. Okay, I was going to say don't say e-com. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, so none of these are e-com. So we can we can I'll make it simple for you. <laughs> Who said lo okay logistics? Then HR. HR. Anybody else? Okay, why HR? About people interacting with people. All the five people are more about interacting with people. Okay, so let me rephrase. All these guys are tech guys. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. So no business guy. You said logistics. This is a company called R R Roadrunner. You probably heard of them. They acquired Tiny Owl. Logistics. So what 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 do you do? What do you need in logistics? You need to understand get merchants on board. So food delivery, you need to get all the merchants, including Pizza Hut and the big brands, and you need to manage drivers. So what they try to do is create a platform where you can have drivers not on salaries, but basically per job. So every delivery they make, you pay them. So you're not salaried. Then you have restaurants and uh, pizza, people like Pizza Hut that actually need these. So if you look at Pizza Hut in uh, Pawai, they have these 20, 30 uh, drivers outside, right? Domino's, right? Like, Domino's is uh, outside, right? So they have 20 delivery boys. What's the cost of delivery boy? Does it make sense to actually outsource it to somebody else who can, who can, who will only charge you per order? So what they did is they basically looked at all these delivery boys as temporary, temporary wage uh, employees that get money per order then they basically looked at multiple vehicle types so you had scooters you have uh, cycles you have trucks because you have warehousing right so what you do is you batch which basically means that suppose you have two deliveries to make if it's the same person you can basically pick it up from two different restaurants and then batch it to that one particular person so you save money per delivery so how do you innovate with a tech platform to actually provide say a 55 rupee or 50 so just to give you some mathematics Typical average value of a of a delivery food delivery is about 300 320 rupees. Okay, the merchant won't pay more than 10 percent for a delivery, which is 30 rupees. The the consumer like you will probably not pay more than 20 25 rupees for the delivery. So 55 rupees. Can you deliver a product within three kilometers at 55 rupees? Is the question. So what kind of people do you need for that? Anyway, just just keep giving you just some thoughts about what kind of teams you want to, you want to sort of create. This guy is a director of Neo Neo Mobile. I don't know if any of you have heard, heard of these companies. What kind of company do you think he'll he'll uh, create? No, again, skip ecom. Two guesses quickly. Okay, fine. Setup box. Okay. Okay, so setup box again. Do some research. I know I know you're kind of just throwing uh, throwing uh, some idea out of your head. Setup box has now not been invent, uh, innovated for the last 10 years. Why has it not been innovated? People don't pay for setup boxes. How much so Tata or Reliance would love to kind of give you better features, get a, get give you pretty, pretty cool sort of hardware devices you can plug into your mobile to change the channel instead of having a, mo instead of having a remote. Nobody pays for that shit. So nobody going to pay more than 2000 rupees and 2000 rupees also is people like, why well, I don't want to pay for it, it should be free. So think about why you're answering also that question. Content okay, fair, at fair, 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 uh, fair guess. So what this guy was doing is, uh, do it, does everybody know of carrier billing? So what typically happens is if you buy and if you say uh, you buy, you get an app, free app on your mobile phone and then you do in-app purchases, right? Suppose you're playing a game, you want sort of uh, top ups. How, how many of you are gamers here? Mobile. Okay, how, any of you are paid for anything on on nap well, chindi chores. <laughs> okay so what it basically does is if your balance if your prepaid balance is a hundred rupees or 200 rupees it basically takes a payment from your from your uh, balance so using a credit card or debit card so he was basically trying to aggregate all the telcos together so that he can basically provide that a solution to somebody who wants to do carrier billing so have you heard of nazara games Again, get out of the campus. <laughs> okay. Um, fine. eBay, Mcheck, Gramin Kuta. You guys have heard of eBay, right? Mcheck is a f uh, Mcheck. Anybody? Okay. You guys should read about this. Gramin Kuta. Anybody of Gramin Bank? Okay. What kind of company do you think he'll build, or she'll build?
Come on, quickly, quickly. So fin fintech, okay, small loan. Okay, so it's good that you're getting a little more deeper. So you didn't tell me fintech. You told me okay, small loans. Good. Anybody else? So is okay. So fintech again or what? Okay, so great. So you're also going one step deeper, saying, look, I'm looking at my target audience is rural people, and I'm basically providing financial services to rural people. His was basically SME. Yeah, so this was SF. So both of you talking fintech, but both of you already defined what your target audience is, which is good. So think a little more along those lines for your own business. So, so what they okay? Anybody heard of Zipdial, which got acquired by Twitter? You guys should get out. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time here. So they built Zipdial, which basically what it tried to do is the whole missed call concept. Anybody of you heard of missed call? So what happens is if you want to engage with a brand, suppose you see a. Uh, or life boy ad or say a png ad and they say okay do a missed call to be part so you know every every no con break con break how do you get on the show you call you do a missed call right yeah. they used to power that so even for con break karpati why don't you find out how do they make money simple things like that like simple obvious things you need to know how they monetizing what is the angle hotstar how are they making money you guys are talking about brands. You guys are talking about why do you know the brand? Because popular. How did it become popular? Did it become popular? Does it make sense to become popular? Are they making money? They're not making money. Think a little fundamentally in terms of understanding why are people doing what they're doing, and does it make sense or not? Because you'll be looking like when you graduate, you look at multiple startups. I don't know how many of you looking at building your own startup or joining a startup. But when you before joining a startup, you would be an intelligent employee if you can ask the co-founder what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So you need to have your own ideas about. Something you're getting into, others don't get into it. Have an opinion, and then keep questioning your opinion, and be open to other people questioning your opinion. Okay, this okay. Next one, very very unique case. Uh, this company when we invested was doing about three crores of revenue. Very senior people. The age was about the three co-founders. All of them about thirty to fifty years old. Uh, so look at look at the experience and take like one or two guesses. It's not a classical industry. It's not an e-com or tech industry. Just give me some hints. What do you think they? Which industry do you think they get into? What automation? Okay, fair, good guess. Anybody else? Well, so as as a disclaimer, all my investments are tech, but don't think. App, think different tech. Think tech as an enabler, not as a solution. So you know LED lighting. So they're basically trying. So if you look at uh, the highway, you have those lights, right? Typically, you look at lights. Actually, the visibility will be this way. There will be a dark center in between because it disperses this way. So what they did is they built IP on the dispersion so that the dispersion is flat. So when you go on the highway, it's not like this, but it's like this. Does that make sense? So they are actually building IP on product. Interestingly, for to ensure that the dispersion of light was constant, wasn't like a lamp. And they they got acquired two years back by Havels. Everybody heard of Havels. So LED was never was never an option in 2011. It was uh, CFL. It was uh, uh, what is the other one? CFL and. Uh, um, the normal bulbs, and then LED became a phenomenon about a year back or two years back. That's why Havel invested in, or bought them out. So even though LEDs is ten times more expensive, or say four times more expensive, the life is ten to twelve times more. So see see how India is evolving as a country. See what people are willing to pay and why they're willing to pay, and don't look at the surface. Go a little deeper. Like look at real estate. Look at look at dirty industries. And see how people are changing those industries and what what they need in terms of technology as an enabler to become either more cost efficient or generate more demand. Very okay. These guys okay. This is this company. You should you'll. I hope you know. <laughs> um, that's so. The two founders both are from Ahmedabad. Uh, one guy was in Feedback Ventures. The other guy was from GLL, which is into real estate. Yeah, so 
quick quick uh, one one question uh, one uh, guess over here think eco uh, think don't think ecom but think uh, very traditional startup okay next okay okay taxi for sure which got acquired by ola so why them what do they do sometimes you won't have the answers and sometimes you don't have the answers it just worked for the for the reason it worked but generally you always think about people who have particular skill sets for what you want to do so yeah any questions on 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 anything i i, don't, I hope i didn't I, i don't think i could answer your questions on your particular companies because i don't have the expertise to answer your questions because i am not in your boots i don't know your industry too well I want you guys to tell me about your industry, and I'll look at practical examples from my startups and say this is what worked in my start in our startups. That's what you can take back as feedback, because you guys are the best guys to know, not me, because you're running the shop. I'm not running the shop. That's why we invest, and you guys <laughs> do the work. <laughs> But it's a very rewarding uh, experience. You meet some really interesting people. You build some really good teams. So. But just make sure you don't waste your time and get the right people. Start with the right people. That's the most important. Yeah. Any any questions? Let me stop here.